Evil Dead Rise is the latest entry in the Evil Dead franchise, and it is the second not to feature Ash in it. Sorry, we're not counting that post credit scene of the 2013 reboot as an appearance. Groovy. The film was screened at the Cannes Film Festival in 1982, where Stephen King sat in on a screening of it and quickly declared it as his fifth favorite horror film of all time. The film quickly gained steam by word of mouth and would soon find a distributor that would push the film out to theaters. Since its debut in a small theater in 1981, Sam Raimi's Evil Dead has spawned a new subgenre in horror with a style all in its own, which is often imitated. And while most demon and possession films tend to fall short in entertainment and or repeat value, when a filmmaker combines the subgenre with comedic undertones, campy effects, and some witty one-liners, it's often a recipe for success. But if you're looking for a demon-slaying fix, you may end up scrolling through countless film titles in search of the perfect mindless horror film to kick back with some popcorn and some goobers too. So we're here to help with five groovy demon slaying movies that you may not have or probably heard of. In what is a very good attempt at repeating Raimi's recipe for success, Jack Brooks' Monster Slayer takes a shot at establishing a new horror protagonist that is forced to face his own fears in order to survive a demonic attack. After witnessing his family being slaughtered by a creature in the woods while on a camping trip, Jack grows up struggling with the guilt of being the only survivor, which is often masked by anger issues. While attending night school, Jack's professor, played by Robert England, asks for his help fixing a plumbing issue at his home. Unbeknownst to them, Jack accidentally unleashed an ancient evil that slowly possesses his professor and is causing him to have an unquenchable hunger that begins to transform him into a monster the more he eats. As Crowley suffers through the transformation, he continues to show up at school to teach until one day he snaps, attacks his students, and transforms them into monsters that resemble the evil dead deadites. Like Ash, Jack is forced to take matters into his own hands and wields an ax through the halls of the school, cutting his way through all of his possessed classmates to get to his professor and end it all. If you're a fan of Evil Dead's campy horror FX goodness, then Jack Brooks' Monster Slayer will deliver. But our protagonist attempts to establish his own character in the genre and is more serious than comedic. The laughs do come, however, from what some may consider an unlikely source. Robert England delivers the laughs throughout the film as he tries to fight off his transformation and live a normal life. Number four. Gone are the days where you will see kids digging in their backyard and discovering a strange rock that kicks off an apocalypse, or seeing a bunch of 20-somethings exploring a creepy basement to discover a reel-to-reel -reel recorder and a book made of skin that unleashes an evil spirit instead of being consumed by modern-day technology. Necrotronic solves for this as demons, like their intended victims, have upgraded to find their unsuspecting victims to possess them through a mobile app game similar to Pokemon Go. In this Aussie film, we get a blend of horror, comedy, and sci-fi where two waste disposal workers, Howard and Rangy, manage to find themselves in the middle of a war between the underworld and a group of necromancers. Like the Evil Dead, only campier, our protagonists bumble their way through the film fighting against the forces of evil led by Finnegan, portrayed by Monica Bellucci. Necrotronic is packed full of action, campy gory goodness, and hilarious one-liners that will satisfy anyone looking to kick back to a cheesy horror movie. Yeah. Oh, how do I look? Good, really good. Number three. 
This list would not be complete without the master of horror himself, Sam Raimi, returning to direct his first horror film in almost 20 years with Drag Me to Hell. Wedding Evil Dead fans' appetite for more horror and more ash, Raimi once again masterfully blends horror comedy and possession seamlessly together again. Drag Me to Hell is about a meek, timid loan officer, Christine, who has to prove to her boss that she can make the hard decisions when dealing with clients and stop feeling sorry for them. Only she chooses the wrong person to enact her change in attitude on, denying an elderly woman an extension on her mortgage, which will lead her to lose her home. The woman in return places a curse on the loan officer that thrusts her into three days of unholy torment. Everything that you love about the Evil Dead is delivered in Drag Me to Hell, with the exception of an Ash Williams type character. We get the classic but updated spin on Deadite's special effects, including animal possession that will make any Raimi horror fan giddy. Not to mention an ending that you may or may not see coming. Number two. Inspired partially by actual events, Studio 666 is about the Foo Fighters moving into a cursed mansion where a band had been brutally murdered 30 years prior. Dave Grohl is looking for inspiration to record their new album and solve his writer's block by recording somewhere epic, on the level of Led Zeppelin recording in a castle. However, it's not a solution to his writer's block that he finds, but instead the evil that still lingers inside that leads him to explore the basement of the mansion where he stumbles upon a lost, unfinished song by the previous band that lived there. Just like the Evil Dead, playing a tape leads to him being possessed by an evil spirit in the mansion and breaks his writer's block, causing him to become obsessed with finishing the song at all costs even if that means he ends up killing his bandmates in the process. It is easy to see where Studio 666 draws some of its inspiration from, as it plays up the tropes of the subgenre successfully while playing homage to its predecessors by packing tons of easter egg references not only in horror films that came before it, but in the music industry. Yes. Something that we covered right here. Something that very few people watched. Go check it out. I was very proud of this one too. Go watch it. Dave Grohl's performance as an obsessed diva is hilarious and entertaining, as well as his bandmates who are trying to cope with his newfound attitude to make the album, while bodies begin to turn up in the mansion. In addition to the cheesy goodness of this film, we get some great music too, which helps propel it to number two on this list. Number one. In 2004, we were introduced to the assassin Vincent, played by Tom Cruise, who commissions a taxi so that he can be driven to each of his hits in a single night. It had made many best of lists the year of its release, but has largely been forgotten since. Fast forward ahead, take that concept and apply it to a demon slayer looking to spare the world from the apocalypse, and you get a recipe for something special, and that is what you will find in Glenn Payne's Driven, starring Casey Dillard as Emerson the Driver and Supernatural's Richard Spate as Roger the Demon Slayer. Only it doesn't take long for Emerson to begin to realize that something doesn't seem right about her passenger, and this is only confirmed after she witnesses Roger stumbling out of the house fighting off two people. When Roger reveals his mission, thus freaking out Emerson, she tries to ditch her passenger, only to find that it's too late and she's too entangled in the war against evil. Driven may be one of the best hidden gem films you may not have heard of, because it got lost in the chaos of our world falling into the chaos of the pandemic. But this is one to find, watch, and own, as it not only delivers in comedy, but the chemistry between our characters is undeniable and drives the film. So like many people that are out there, not only is it tough to find a good demon possession movie with exorcist themes in it, but then try to find a comedy one on top mm -hmm. of that. And that's pretty difficult, especially ones that you have not heard of before. So before we jump into what we think, have you heard of these films? 
Would it be on your list? Let us know by dropping that in the comments. What have you seen in this horror comedy genre that you would recommend for us to watch? Now, I love every film on this list, and I have to say, it's been a while since I watched Jack Brooks' Monster Slayer, and I forgot that Robert England was in that one. Me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was reading it, I was like, did I see this movie? You saw it a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think that was one of the times when I was working two jobs, and I passed out halfway through it. So we didn't get a chance to talk about it then. But... <laughs> Robert England's comedy is just undeniable. He is so goofy and over the top in this movie. It's worth just watching for him. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of his performance in Zombie Strippers and how over the top he was in 2001 Maniac. So it's definitely worth watching just for him. Yeah, he doesn't get the credit I think he deserves as like a comedic actor. But I mean, let's, you know, think about it. Even going back to... Nightmare on Elm Street. He was funny as Freddy. Like, he was the only serial killer, right, that was like, had like these one liners coming out, you know? No one else, I mean, most of them didn't talk mm -hmm. <laughs> besides Freddy. And he always had like something sarcastic to say or whatever. So, Robert England is a funny guy. Mm -hmm. Now, there's easily some other movies that we could have tossed on this list, like Night of the Demons, Demons. But we wanted to find the hidden gems that maybe you've missed. And that brings us to what we have here. And number one on the list is Driven. You know, I, I am so happy that this fell into our lap. And it was by accident because Glenn Payne actually had messaged us when we were part of Women of Horror talking about, hey, look, I have this film out there. Can you help us promote it? And then when we got to watch, it was like, damn, this is good. Why isn't... Why isn't nobody talking about this film? It's a really good one. And the, one of the things that I really enjoy about that I talk about all the time is the cinematography is so damn good. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of Last Night in Soho. It reminds me of Christmas Bloody Christmas because it has those vibrant colors that just yeah. really highlight what's going on in the film so well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I didn't know if I'd like it going into it. It's no hidden, you know... It's not hidden that I'm not a big fan of demon movies. So if it's if I put it on a list, then it's probably worth checking out because I'm not too hype on them. But the ones on this list are definitely worth giving a watch. Yeah, and I'm still shocked that nobody really talks about Studio 666 as much either. And that was just great. But then again, it did come out in a horror-heavy year last year. Yeah. So it's, it's real easy to get lost. And not all the theaters got it, mm -hmm. right? Because we were, it was kind of like up in the air whether or not we were gonna get to see it because like our one theater didn't get it until later, which happens quite a lot. So we weren't even positive that we'd get to see it. We didn't know where it was gonna drop. And yeah. that's unfortunate. Yeah. So as mentioned, you know, what's on your list? Let us know by dropping it in the comments. And are you going to see Evil Dead Rise? Are you even a fan of the franchise? Let us know, because we're going to have some Evil Dead content come out on the next couple of Pop 5s that you want to tune in for. So there is going to be a ranking, and we're also going to talk about ripoffs. There's been a lot of them. And I narrowed it down. I found a list of approximately 15 movies that kind of are ripoffs of Evil Dead, and I believe I cut it in half. <laughs> so, yeah, and that was, I, you know, I had to read through them and really figure out which ones. I mean, there was a couple that were like word for word, like scene for scene, like ripoffs of the Evil Dead. And those were foreign, I believe. But yeah, so there's, there's a lot more than you would think. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy. And that brings us to, don't forget that you need to like, comment, share, subscribe. Yes, do all of those things because it does take a lot of research to go into pulling together a list. And sometimes, like the New Year's Eve movies that you should check out, there's a lot of bad out there before we actually find the really good stuff to put on oh, that list. Oh, yeah, we went through so many bad. <laughs> but don't forget, every video gets 25 likes and comments and 50 and 75. You'll win some movie theater swag. When we hit 100 likes and 100 comments on that video, you'll win a full-size movie theater poster. And when we hit 5,000 subscribers, you have a chance to win a 
box of strawberries and scream cereal signed by Matthew Lillard, David Arquette, and Rose McGowan. But at 4,000 subscribers, we're going to give away the Scream Popcorn Head Bucket First Edition from Cinemark as well. So please, please, every little like, every little comment helps us get further out there and broadens our audience. So we thank you for watching this video, and we thank you for helping us grow. Yes. And until the next Pop 5, see, see ya. ya.